Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we'll talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. Today we will talk about blood and blood cells. We will talk about RBCs, WBCs and platelets. We will see their characteristic features, roles and functions in the body. Now let's start the video. So blood is a fluid connective tissue which is derived from the mesoderm. Mesoderm is the middle layer of the three germ layers that develop during the embryonic development stage. And the branch of science that deals with the study of blood, blood forming tissues and disorders associated with them is called hematology. Blood is called the fluid of life as it helps in transporting oxygen from lungs to rest of the body and carbon dioxide from the rest of the body to the lungs. Blood is also called as the fluid of growth as it helps in absorbing the nutritive substance from the digestive system and transport it to each and every cell of the body and also it transports hormones from the endocrine glands to all the tissues of the body. Blood is also called as the fluid of health as it protects the body against the diseases and also helps in getting rid of the waste products by transporting them to the excretory organs. Now let's have a look at some properties of blood. The color of blood in arteries is bright red and in veins it is dark red in color. It is 8% of the body mass of an individual. The pH of blood is slightly alkaline from pH 7.3 to 7.4. It is slightly salty in taste. Its temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. It is 3 to 4 times more viscous than water and it is 5 to 6 liters in an individual. Now let's see what are different components of blood. So if we centrifuge the blood, depending upon their densities, it will be separated in three layers. The topmost layer will be a straw colored liquid which is called the plasma. The bottommost layer will be of red blood cells and between these two layers is a thin layer of white buffy color which is of white blood cells and platelets. 55% of blood is plasma, 41% is red blood cells and the thin layer of white blood cells and platelets is 4%. Now let's study each component in detail. First is the plasma. It is a pale yellow colored liquid component of the blood that holds the cellular elements of blood in a suspension form. The plasma consists of 90% of water, 6 to 8% of plasma proteins and 1% of electrolytes like sodium and chloride. It also consists other components like nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, hormones like cortisol and thyroxine, waste products like urea and blood gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. Now let's see different types of plasma proteins. So we have albumin which helps in maintaining the osmotic pressure of the plasma. Then we have globulins like antibodies which have a role in defense mechanism and transport proteins which helps in transport of hormones and enzymes. We have fibrinogens which helps in blood clotting and we have other proteins also like alpha 1 antitrypsin and coagulation factor. The second component is red blood cells which are also called erythrocytes. They don't have a nucleus and they are biconcave in shape that means they are thinner at the center and thicker at the periphery. The shape and presence of no nucleus allows to accumulate more number of hemoglobin so that more amount of oxygen can be transferred to the cells. The thickness of RBC is 2.5 micrometers and the diameter is 7.5 micrometers. The process of origin, development and maturation of a red blood cell is called erythropoiesis. It all starts in the bone marrow with multipotent hematopoietic stem cell. The development and maturation of red blood cell takes place for 21 days inside the bone marrow. After the 21 day, the nucleus is removed from the cell and it is released in the bloodstream where it is matured to erythrocyte in 1-2 to two days. The red color of RBC is due to presence of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is composed of a polypeptide called globin and the pigment heme. Each hemoglobin molecule has four polypeptide chains that means four globin chains, two alpha and two beta and each chain has one heme group. 
a heme group consists of an iron molecule which is held in a heterocyclic ring called the porphyrin ring and each iron molecule has the ability to combine with one oxygen molecule each 100 ml of red blood cell contains 34 grams of hemoglobin and 1 gram of hemoglobin can combine with 1.34 ml of oxygen now that we have seen the growth and development of rbc now let's have a look at how a red blood cell dies so the average life span of a red blood cell is about 120 days and they are destroyed by the reticulo endothelial system of the body kuffer cells break down the rbc into hemoglobin kuffer cells are present in spleen and the spleen is called as the graveyard of rbc spleen is a component of the reticulo endothelial system of the body globin part of hemoglobin which are the polypeptide chains gets added to the protein pool of the body and are used later the iron of heme gets stored in the bone marrow and used later the porphyrin ring gets converted to the bilirubin and it's excreted from the body by gall bladder the third component of blood are the white blood cells they are also called leukocytes they are colorless nucleated They are larger in size and more in number as compared to the red blood cells and they have a role in defense mechanism of the body. White blood cells are categorized in two types, granulocytes and agranulocytes. They are named so because granulocytes have a granular appearance which is not seen in case of agranulocytes. Granulocytes are of three types, neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils. Neutrophils helps in phagocytosis. Eosinophils fights against the parasitic infections and basophils have a role in inflammation and allergic reactions. Similarly, there are two types of agranulocytes, lymphocytes and monocytes. Lymphocytes produces specific immune responses through B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte and natural killer cells and monocyte fights with bacteria, fungi and viruses. Here is a list of diameter and life span of all the types of WBC cells. There are some characteristic properties shown by these WBC cells. First one is the diapedesis. It is a process by which WBC cells are able to squeeze through the narrow blood vessel spaces. The second property is amoeboid movement. With the help of short acting filaments Neutrophils, monocytes and lymphocytes are able to show this amoebic movement by protrusion of cytoplasm and change in the shape. The third property is chemotaxis. It is the attraction of a WBC towards the injured tissue by some chemical substances released at the site of injury. These chemical substances are called chemoattractants. And the fourth property is called phagocytosis. Neutrophils and monocytes are able to engulf foreign bodies and destroy them. and the fourth component of blood is platelets they are fragments of red bone marrow they are colorless and non nucleated they have a cell membrane with microtubules and the life span of platelets is 8 to 12 days platelets have many functions in body like in blood clotting clot retraction hemostasis repair of ruptured blood vessel defense mechanism and in inflammation This is a count of RBCs, WBCs, and platelets in a healthy male and a healthy female. So, guys, this was all about blood and blood cells. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you liked it, and if you did, like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel.